This is a video I'm making just before we take this down and replace it with something else. Uh, this is about Solar Assistant, which is over there. So uh, this is a system I put up about uh, three years ago, long before any of the MPP Solo, the 6548s are out. Um, these were the options at the time. So um, this video, I get many, many questions on asking me how to connect Wi-Fi up, and you'll see all the Wi-Fi modules are disconnected. So many people don't like, including me, uh, some of the Wi-Fi modules that have to speak to the cloud somewhere in the U.S. or uh, internationally in China. And you have to connect those Wi-Fi modules up to communicate with the cloud. They update every five, sec every five minutes. Excuse me. And so uh, if you're trying to solve problems, uh, five-minute intervals is okay, but not as great as Solar Assistant. So I'm not going to talk about the setup over here. It's a 15 kilowatt system driving at 12,000 T. So it's got, it's got double redundancy. It's cool, but uh, it's time for these to go. Uh, they do have some little minor issues, which I'm uh, which I'm tired of. So uh, this is about Solar Assistant. So here we have the previous model uh, before the HDMI output, and you'll notice that each one of these USB cables over here goes to each of the GrowWatt. Um, inverters and the Wi-Fi module is out so I want to show you I get many many questions on how can I monitor this in my house let's say I'm living remotely and there's no internet access I'm living in my trailer I'm living in the middle of the desert and how do I see what's going on with my inverters without having to connect to the internet and that's what this is all about over here we have an unregistered Raspberry Pi okay in other words the, the solar assistant which is unregistered out the box from what's 24 seven. And uh, I went to Walmart and got myself a tablet. And I went to Walmart and got myself a hundred dollar tablet. On there are smaller ones that were 60 bucks, but this is the 10 inch one. So uh, I wanna show you how to not have internet at all on this guy at all and connect straight to Solar Assistant without any internet access whatsoever. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this guy on and we're gonna go from there. Now, this guy's going to scream at you, wanting internet everywhere it can get, but we're not going to allow it that. So we're going to turn it on for the first time. So it takes a long time to boot up, all right? Then it's going to ask for Wi-Fi. Now, Solar Assistant, as you take it out the box and you supply 5 volts to it, like I've shown you in previous videos, it transmits its own Wi-Fi signal called, guess what, called Solar Assistant. And that's what we're going to connect the tablet up to. So all of these cute things, you know, these days with uh, all the espionage and data tracking going on, I understand nobody wants anything connected to the internet anymore. So connect to Wi-Fi. And I've got my camera light on just to kind of show things. Maybe I can turn it off for this video. There you go. Connecting to Wi-Fi, searching for Wi-Fi networks. And it's going to find a Wi-Fi called See All Wi-Fi See All Wi-Fi Networks, and there it is, Solar Assistant. So the reason it didn't want to connect to it because it found it didn't have internet access, but we not cared about that. So we connect to Solar Assistant, and the Solar Assistant password I'm going to show password over there is Solar One Two Three. All right, now I'm going to oops, Solar One Two Three. All right, and we click connect. And now it's already connected. So now it's going to take ages, all right? This thing's going to spin trying to connect to the internet. And then eventually it's going to give up. So just let it be. It's going to take a long, long time. Uh, these guys like to know everything about you. So um, just don't give it that opportunity. So I'm going to pause the video and wait till it comes back. And you'll notice this is just the on tablet from Walmart. It's got Bluetooth on it as well. We can connect to, um, we can connect via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi. There's nothing attached to this tablet. Just come out the box. Still going. Two minutes later, it's still going. While I'm waiting for that to finish up, uh, let me give you a little demonstration. Uh, I have a lot of solar outside. Okay, like uh, whew, 30, 30 kilowatts of solar. Okay, not, 
And that's where the solar comes into the PV combiner box. It comes two two thirty volt models driving a twelve thousand T because it has an auto transformer in it. It's been working fine, but sometimes the lights uh, flicker and sometimes it does strange things. So it's time for this to go. Um, I also have a MPP solar charge controller which is not being used. Uh, this thing has a very little fascinating function in that you can. It's got a little relay output. And I'm using the relay output over there um, because you can set the relay to switch on based on a certain criteria, time of day, battery voltage, etc. And I have about 100 kilowatt hours of battery on my system with the Nissan Leaf batteries. Back in the day, three years ago, there was nothing else. All these rack mount batteries of all new, recent goodies. But I have the relay programmed to turn on based on battery voltage. So when the solar is fully charged, when the batteries are fully charged, um, I turn on the excess output of these 230 volt inverters to drive two hot water tanks. They power two hot water tanks and then the hot water from these tanks feeds into the gas heater over there. So the hot water is preheated via solar before it gets to the propane tank so you're kind of saving on propane as well and it only turns these hot water guys on when the solar uh, when the battery voltage is full and there's nothing else left to charge so um <clears throat> this some ideas all right so we're back to the tablet it says couldn't connect try another network skip all right these guys just want you to want you to connect to the internet in a, in a bad way Choose your um, time zone over there. Okay. We're in Mountain Standard Time over here. Set the date. That's obviously, that's the wrong date. Uh, it is choose one. It's probably the 24th today. And next. And then it's going to try and connect to Google services. Obviously, it wants to know everything it can about you. So we're just going to turn everything off. Turn everything off. It wants to... Scan for this, scan for that. My goodness me, okay. And then screen lock, I'm ignoring that. I'm gonna skip that. All right. Then I wanna skip screen lock, yes, because who cares? And then it's gonna take a long time trying to connect to the internet again, okay. So this is where we're at, so it's not connected at all. And then we go to Chrome or whatever browser you, you wanna go for over there. Uh, I'm not a fan of Chrome either. Anything that's made by uh, help send data, turn that off. It's like turn on sync. No thanks. Now we're going to type the first time. We're going to type in the, our solar assistance IP address. 10.0.0.5. That's the IP address we're going to go to. And we click go. And then it's telling me there's no internet. Okay, we know that. Okay, so what it's done is, that's why it won't delay to go in there. What it's done is, it's disconnected from the Wi-Fi. So let's connect, reconnect to the Wi-Fi. So this is how hungry, internet hungry these guys are. So hold down the Wi-Fi button. And we've got to reconnect it to Solar Assistant. Okay, you know what the password is. I'll show you the password again. Solar Solar one two three, and click OK. So it it rejected because it couldn't have couldn't connect to the internet. Okay, so let's go back to our browser. Let's type in ten dot zero dot zero five again, and then boom, here we have Solar Assistant right there. Okay, so this this uh, Solar Assistant has been running for a long time. So we can see the battery. I've got an emulated battery over here. And I've typed it in that it's 70 kilowatt hours. That's the percent of charge, etc., etc. So what's cool, this is before BMSs came out on these batteries. So what's cool is you can emulate a BMS as well. Um, you can see there I've got three GrowWatt devices selected. Um, those are the USB ports that it's, it has. If you have, to, if you want to change anything, you've got to disconnect first. Have a look. Those are the built-in GrowWatt uh, USB devices. Then we have an emulated BMS over here. 
So we put in, let's say, 70 kilowatt hours. We click advanced. And then, so even if it, we do not communicate with the battery, we can kind of put in some details in here. We can say the current state of charge and uh, drift the state of charge on low current because sometimes it becomes more and more inaccurate if it's guessing. And then we give it some guidelines saying if it's, in my case, uh, this is before lithium ion came out. Um, lithium ion has a very flat discharge curve. So I've set mine to 48 volts at 30% state of charge. You might set that to close to 50 volts and 55 volts are set as 80%, just so that solar assistant kind of knows where to reset its statistics if it's off. And then you can go back there and just click, and I've used an emulated BMS, and I just click connect. Well, it's not that it's been disconnected before, but now, okay, let me show you. In this state over here, this will be blank for you, right? I've entered a Wi-Fi ID in there previously, which is actually the hotspot on my phone uh, when I needed to update. The only time I needed to, uh, this to update on the internet was when I needed to update Solar Assistant. So I give it a temporary, um, a temporary Wi-Fi address, which is my phone hotspot that I can turn on and off at will. You can see exactly how much power is being drawn from these inverters right now, which is coming off the battery. And what's cool is also it'll show you that I'm losing. Today is a pretty much a snowy day over here in Utah. It's telling you how much current is being drawn from the battery, how many watts. But what I do like the most is telling me at what percentage per hour at the current rate I'm losing. So it seems as if we still have plenty of power for the rest of the day. Um, let's look at some other things. Over the last 30 days, there's some charts over there and what what is very very cool is there's all the history you can see that we're fairly big users of power there's a day charging the electric vehicle we charge electric vehicle almost every day but that's how many kilowatt hours we're using a day which is quite substantial 90 kilowatt hours 106 kilowatt hours and sometimes we've even switched off moved over to the grid when things haven't been that clear so um, that's all you can get without connecting to the internet. That's all I wanted to show you was the power. Now this little tablet, <clears throat> I could just go into my RV or into my house or whatever and stick it in the wall, um, <clears throat> put it on a charger and leave it there. And all it's doing is connecting to this Wi-Fi hotspot that is on Solar Assistant. And so there you've got remote monitoring, not connected to the internet at all. And uh, let's say your, in your inverter is out in the uh, in a shed somewhere. To just stick this on the wall inside your house. As long as it has Wi-Fi access to uh, Solar Assistant, you're good to go. And as always, you can get Solar Assistant off our website, watts247.com. And then uh, the newer model now has the HDMI cable that you can connect to the output on the Solar Assistant. I've made a video on that already. But uh, this is just to show you, you don't need anything fancy if you don't want to have some a dedicated display somewhere in your cabin or RV. Perfect. Thanks for watching, guys.